All right, welcome back crime fighters for another edition of Calhoun County's Most Wanted, where you get to help make Calhoun County a better and safer place by helping us lock up the bad guys. I'm your host, Chris Wright, Lieutenant Fallon Hurst, joining us today from the Calhoun County Sheriff's Office. Good to see you, Fallon. Good to see you, Chris. All right, so we always start off the show by thanking our viewers for the work that they've done in helping us uh, locate some individuals off our uh, list. Got, got uh, two more this week. So that brings our count up to 4,551. And I know you guys really do appreciate the public getting involved and sharing the information that they have. Absolutely. It's helpful on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Got to share the information. There's, there's, you guys are pretty good at finding out information, but nothing replaces somebody who knows yeah, <laughs> coming and telling you. The community knows the community. Yeah. And speaking of finding out information, You've been doing some research here lately and sharing it on the Sheriff's Office Facebook page. Yes. A lot of people have really been enjoying this history of the Sheriff's Office and the, the people who have held the office of Sheriff and, and some interesting things that you've come up with. Yes. Right, so. um, uh, some people have found it as a nice break from hearing only about the coronavirus. I've been getting a lot of messages of people that just look forward to it. We post them every Wednesday and we just highlight the next sequential sheriff and just tell a little bit about him. Yeah, it's important that we get the coronavirus information, yes. but that doesn't need to be the only thing that's going on in our lives yes. right now. So uh, when we come back from the break, I want to talk about some of that history that, uh, that you've uncovered and shared, and uh, we will find out more about the history of the Calhoun County Sheriff's Office, and we'll have the first half of this week's lineup next on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. I love getting gift cards. Gift cards are a popular and convenient way to give someone a gift, but they have also become an easy way for scammers to steal your money. If an unknown person calls you for any reason and suggests that you make a payment by using a gift card, don't. That's not a gift, nor a payment. That's a scam. No respectable business would request payment in that manner. Neither would a business tell you the exact location of where to go and buy that gift card. If you purchase the card and give the scammer the numbers on the back, they will immediately transfer your money into another card into another account. Be sure to keep the card and your purchase receipt. There is no guarantee that you can get your money back, but do contact the card company immediately. For more information, you can call me, Nancy Hilton, at the Calhoun County Sheriff's Office, 256-236-6600. Let's say someone calls and says he's from the IRS. He says you owe taxes and need to pay right away by getting a gift card at the store. Should you do it? No, it's a scam. Government agencies will never make you pay with a gift card. Now let's say the caller claims to be from a tech support company. He says he needs to fix a problem with your computer after you pay him with a gift card. Should you? No, that's a scam too. Real tech support companies don't work like that or make you pay with a gift card. What if you get a call from someone who says she's a relative or friend and needs money right now? She begs you to go buy her a gift card. Should you do it? No, that's also a scam. Gift cards wouldn't help real family members or friends in a real emergency. Gift cards are for gifts, not for payments. Anyone who tells you to pay with a gift card is a scammer. And once you've shared the gift card number and PIN, your money is probably gone. So what do you do? If you have paid with a gift card, contact the company that issued the card right away, and then tell the FTC. Reporting to the company and the FTC helps us fight these scams. Go to ftc.gov slash gift cards to learn more about how to protect yourself and others. All right, let's take a look at this week's lineup on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. First up, Chiquita Roundtree of Atlanta, Georgia, Wanted here in Calhoun County for failure to pay for trafficking in stolen identities. Julia Beam of Ohatchee wanted for theft of property, first degree of motor vehicle. Jefferson Whirl of Anniston wanted for possession of a controlled substance and on bond revocation for possession of a controlled substance and use and possession of drug paraphernalia. 
Christopher House of Jacksonville wanted for obstruction of justice using a false ID and a failure to appear warrant for possession of a controlled substance and use in possession of drug paraphernalia. Kendrick Kirksey of Aniston wanted for failure to pay for conspiracy to commit robbery, first degree. And Christopher McFry of Piedmont wanted on a failure to appear charge for or failure to appear warrant for burglary, third degree. If you can help us find anybody in this video, please contact Calhoun County Crime Stoppers at 256 238 1414. All right, we'll have the second half of this week's lineup coming up in uh, just a few minutes, but right now, Lieutenant Fallon Hurst is uh, joining us. And uh, we're getting a bit of a history lesson today, which you, you've been sharing this information on our Facebook page. Anybody wants to find out more can just go and scroll through the, the Sheriff's Office Facebook page and, and get the histories of all the, the sheriffs that we've had uh, pretty much. Have you, have you already documented all of our sheriffs on there now? I've been working on it for several years and uh, I've just decided to, on New Year's Day this year, we posted the sheriff from 1920 and we moved up to where we are now every Wednesday and now that we've gotten where we're at, the last one was Sheriff Amerson. Uh, we went back to the beginning of the county in 1832 and started working our way forward again. So uh, that's a long Wednesday. way to go. So, so you say you started working on this a couple of years ago. Yes. I thought you'd started researching for when we started posting these, but uh, you've been doing this. What, what made you decide to to research the history of the office? Um, kind of a detail-oriented guy. Sheriff Amerson had began uh, documenting this when he was sheriff and uh, there were some holes in there that were kind of there's some black holes in the timeline of the county where things are just missing and uh, um, so I started working on that and I was able to further what he was doing because of the the increase the genealogical websites and the newspaper archive websites and so I was able to expound on what he had done and just having the holes there bothered me. <laughs> so I, I just got into it and it just turned into a years long thing. I know a lot of people have been reading what you've been posting and, and really gotten a lot out of it. And so we've gotten some really good feedback from the public on this. So uh, for people that haven't read all these posts, what are some of the things that, that you've uncovered that uh, maybe were a little surprising to you about the history of the Calhoun County Sheriff's Office? Uh, a couple of times that coroners by law have served as the sheriff. Um, you know, anytime the sheriff suddenly vacates the office, if he were to die in office suddenly and there weren't a replacement already picked by the governor, um, or uh, which that's happened, or um, if he were to be absent for an extended period for some time. Uh, we've had that happen twice uh, in Calhoun County's history. Um, uh, it's, it's interesting to see things that sheriffs do now that are virtually identical to what they were doing in the 1830s and then the things that we don't do anymore that's kind of neat to look back on the, the timeline of the, the sheriff and what they, their duties used to entail that they don't anymore because of the changes in the laws. And What are some of those things that would have been different back in the 1830s? Well, of course, prior to Jim Crow laws, but... Um, slavery enforcement and things like that. Um, the rest of it is generally about the same. Um, deputies used to be assigned geographically um, based on where they lived instead of where now. I live in Ohatchee and I wake up every morning and drive to Aniston and I could be working anywhere in the county. Used to, there would be a deputy for Ohatchee, a deputy for White Plains, for Piedmont, you know. And that's how the sheriffs would pick their deputies when they were elected. And there's some advantages to that, I guess, because you're really embedded within that part of the community. Yeah, yeah. And it, it helps to know the, a little bit of the community everywhere. So. Sometimes a little too much familiarity can uh, get in the way of doing some good policing, can't it? It, it could, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so what are some of the things that, uh, that you've noticed changing throughout the years? How, how do you see things progressing along the way? Uh, the office is getting larger. And... Uh, more people call on law enforcement for a lot more than just law enforcement. Um, of course, we're we're there to help for anything we can. So it's not always directly related to law enforcement. We're public servants, so um, we've taken on a lot more of that that probably wasn't quite so in the past, um, in the distant past. Uh, so the sheriff's office just is a complex entity. It does several different things. Are there any particular incidents throughout the history that uh, that you've 
found especially interesting? Yeah, um, every sheriff has their own style and their own, you know, way of approaching the law. Some are more aggressive than others. Some don't like to enforce uh, unpopular laws. Uh, uh, we had, uh, at one point in the county's history, it was actually the first one I was talking about from the 1920s, there was a sheriff that uh, was having to enforce uh, a health code where the, the county was requiring people to dip their cattle in these vats. And so the county, the county was building these vats um, around the area for people to walk their cattle through to sterilize them from a disease. And people didn't like it. And so they, uh, they began bombing them and blowing them up <laughs> with dynamite. And one of them actually happened on a farm at the sheriff's house. They blew up a, a vat at his house. So that's kind of interesting. Folks walking around Calhoun County with dynamite <laughs> blowing stuff up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It'd be a pretty dramatic response, I imagine, if that happened uh, here in 2020. Yeah, probably a little more of a response than back then. Yeah. So th things have definitely changed over the years, but uh, some things are still the same, aren't they? They are. Um, court orders, um, you know, we're the, the arm of the court, so we're always having to enforce anything that they send out. Sheriff sales, you know, if you look in the classified sections of the newspaper, the legal sections, the things the sheriff's having to sell for creditors and, and things like that. Um, the wording that you'll find from the 1800s on till now is almost identical, except for back then they were selling things on the courthouse steps in Jacksonville, and now they're doing it in Anniston. So. I guess the, that makes it a little bit easier for you to research if the, the wording is still the same. It helps a lot, yeah. yeah. All right, well, this is fascinating. I want to talk some more about this. We need to come back in just a minute, but uh, we'll, we've got to take a quick break. When we do come back, we'll have the second half of this week's lineup and more on the history of the Calhoun County Sheriff's Office on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. All right, here we go with the second half of this week's lineup on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. Tamika Bryant of Fairfield is wanted on bond revocation for theft of property, third degree. Warren Freeman of East Deboga wanted for probation violation for domestic violence, strangulation, and possession of a controlled substance. Donald Cruz of Dadeville is wanted for domestic violence, third degree harassment. Roy Hamilton of Tucker, Georgia, wanted on a failure to appear warrant for trafficking in marijuana. Rogelio Predo Cacho of Leeds, wanted for probation violation for trafficking in methamphetamine. Johnny Ford of East Deboga, wanted on a failure to appear warrant for use in possession of drug paraphernalia. Douglas Phillips of Aniston, wanted on bond revocation for distribution of a controlled substance. Can you help us find anybody in this week's lineup? If so, please contact Calhoun County Crime Stoppers at 256-238-1414. All right, we'll talk about some property crimes here in just a few minutes, see if you can help us uh, solve some of those. But uh, right now we're getting a bit of a history lesson. Lieutenant Fallon Hurst of the Calhoun County Sheriff's Office has been researching for years now the history of the Sheriff's Office, the sheriffs and what happened within the office and um, been posting these updates here this year on the Facebook page, getting a lot of great response on that. So it's good to see people interested yeah. in the sheriff's office. I'm going to put you on the spot right now. You're not ready for this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. We're building a Mount Rushmore, not really, but if we were building a Mount Rushmore of Calhoun County sheriffs, whose faces have we got? Oh, there's some dynasties in there. I think, of course, uh, Sheriff Amerson, who served for several years, um, Sheriff Sneed Jr., Sheriff Sneed Sr., you know, they held the office for decades. Um, a lot of people liked the sheriff right before him, Sacco Pate. And uh, if we're building a R Mount Rushmore, once you get past 1860, you know, the pictures disappear. So <laughs> they're not going <laughs> to so, be okay, So we can eliminate everybody <laughs> yeah. before 1860 because <laughs> yeah. we don't know what they look like. Not a lot of pictures. So. <laughs> but, uh, but after that, all right, so, so, so you've listed the, the most recent sheriffs. Yeah, they're probably the, the, the freshest in everybody's mind and most fondly remembered. If, if we had to include one from earlier, who, who, who would you go with, do you think? I'm not really sure. Is, is there one that, that you would look up and say, that's a sheriff I would have loved to have worked for? Hmm. Without the list in front of me, it's there's... There's 37, 37 of them, so there's a lot to, to uh, try to remember if I'm not looking at a list. Of course, you got to work for uh, 
Sheriff Emerson and Sheriff Wade, so you got the two best anyway, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Give that good political answer there. That's <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> um, should I ask you if there were any that you'd be glad that you didn't work for? <laughs> there were some interesting ones. There was a uh, um, uh, Peter Cotton, Easter, but <laughs> mm -hmm. Peter Cotton in the uh, 30s that was, he refused to enforce prohibition laws to the point that a grand jury tried to have him uh, um, impeached and removed from office, which they didn't, and uh, he ran for office again, and the people said no. So he 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 never got reelected. But mm -hmm. um, him um, in shortly after the Civil War, um, the area was under military rule, and there were uh, federal military governors that were in charge of everything, and they would remove civil servants from office that were still too sympathetic to the to the South. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a sheriff, William McClellan, got removed from office. Mm -hmm. Or Samuel, excuse me, Samuel McClellan, that was removed from office uh, by a military governor and replaced. Obviously, that, that would have been a challenging time to, to be a sheriff. Are there any other periods in, in Calhoun County history that were especially challenging for a sheriff to do his job? I think it's always been a challenging job. Um, the jails have always been a difficult thing. You know, by law, the sheriffs have to have the jail. And... Um, Jails are always a challenge. Um, I think the office has typically always been underfunded in all law enforcement, but um, I would think all pretty much all times are challenging for some degree, but around the Civil War, certainly, because they're having to, um, after during Reconstruction, they're having to do what the federal government wants them to do, which is still unpopular to the people that have elected that person to office. So. Yeah, it, it's never fun to try to enforce laws that people don't agree with. Correct. And certainly yeah. getting back to the prohibition, that would have uh, been difficult. And yes. in that case, he chose oh, yeah. to try not to enforce those mm -hmm. laws. And then, of course, you go back, you were talking about during the, uh, the days of slavery and having to, uh, to enforce mm -hmm. the slavery laws. Can you imagine that? Your job as a law enforcement officer would be to tell another human being, yeah. I'm taking you back yes. to your owner. Yeah. Um, a lot of times that what they would, they would collect runaways in the jail, runaway slaves in the jail, and then they would just advertise in the newspaper until they found the owner, or they would auction the, auction them off. Wow, it, just using the word owner in that sense just feels wrong. It does. Yeah. Um, so it, there there are times that uh, that doing the job is is very difficult and challenging on the uh, on the body, the mind, the spirit, all of it. Yes. Well, we thank you for the work that you do. Obviously, you're not spending all your time out there researching. No. <laughs> you're doing other police work as well, but yeah. uh, you've, you've taken this on as just an added duty on your own, and we appreciate you doing that. It's, it's, a, it's a great history, and um, it'll mean a lot to everybody that, uh, that comes after us as well. Yeah, thank you. All right. We need to take a quick break. We will come back. We will have the Crime Stoppers segment of the show, talk about some uh, unsolved property crimes that hopefully you can help us with. And we'll have our crazy criminal of the week on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. Let's see if you can help us out with some property crimes committed recently here in Calhoun County. During the early morning hours of April 9th, an unknown person attempted to burglarize a home located on Kenyon Drive in Ohatchee. Between April 3rd and April 10th, a Troy-built riding lawnmower was stolen from a residence located on Bama Trail in Ohatchee. Between April 5th and April 11th, a Husqvarna weed eater and a five-gallon jug of gas were stolen from a shed on Circle C Road in Alexandria. If you have information about any of these crimes or others, please contact Calhoun County Crime Stoppers at 256-238-1414. Stupid! You're so stupid! All right, so it's uh, time to embarrass somebody. And uh, have, you, have you had... Well, and have you had anybody come to the uh, the sheriff's office with some really odd requests for the coronavirus? Yeah. Had anybody bring you in their uh, their drugs and want you to test them for the virus? I'm sure that it's not me directly, but I'm sure that it's happened. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely happened in Iowa. We had this 53-year-old uh, lady, uh, Sean Salmon, showed up at the uh, the police department and said, "I think my drugs." <laughs> might be infected. <laughs> so she showed them, I think, 14 ounces of meth wow. and wanted them to, 
test it for COVID-19. Do you have the, the proper equipment to test meth for COVID-19? <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> but we, we would certainly take it and test it for other things. Test it to make sure it was what she said it was. Yes, and uh, and then she's going to be having some uh, some possession charges, isn't she? Yes. 14 ounces, is that... That's quite a bit, isn't it? Yeah, that's a, that's a whole lot. That's or maybe I got that, maybe it's 14 grams. Yeah, that that would be user level. <laughs> Shows how much I know <laughs> about meth. Fortunately, I know very little. Yeah. Um, but uh, she also had some marijuana, I think, and one or two other things that, that they uh, busted her for. So it, it just never ceases to amaze me, the, the people who will bring their crimes to the police from the sheriff's office because they think somebody else has done them wrong. Yeah. It happens. Uh, people get their drugs stolen and want to come report it. So. And sadly, the, you know, you you end up becoming a victim and not being able to get the help that you need because what you were doing was illegal. So yes. just do the right thing and you don't have to worry about that. All right. That's all the time that we've got for this week. We do appreciate you tuning in and we'll be looking for you again next week on Calhoun County's Most Wanted.